Welcome to Remember Me by Intervivos, the show about living life to its fullest, leaving a legacy, and deciding how you will be remembered. And now, your humble team of expert planners, taking the legal world by storm. Hi, and welcome to Remember Me. I'm Glenn Wagstaff. I'm here with my co-host, Mike Black. And today we're talking about planning for taxes and specifically helping business owners to plan around their tax exposure. Uh, So before we get started, just want to let everybody know we are going to be talking about some legal concepts, some some tax concepts. Nothing that we talk about today is legal advice or tax advice. Of course, you should meet with a professional before you make any decisions for yourself. Um, But we have a special guest on the show today from Taxes Mastered. Taxes Mastered is a company based here in the state of Utah, and they focus on really specializing in helping business owners to lower their tax exposure. So we have John Brook, who's the principal and CEO uh, at Taxes Mastered with us. Um, John, tell us a little bit about your background and how you decided to kind of get into the space of helping business owners with their taxes. Well, thanks, Glenn. I appreciate being here. Um, I got started in 1975, so I've been doing this a long time. I graduated from Arizona State University, and I went to work for Pete Morick and Mitchell, which was the largest of the big eight firms at the time. And I worked in tax, I worked in audit, I worked in management consulting. And what I found out was is that our clients were not really interested in the technicals. What they were interested in is, how can you lower my tax bill? How can I take that money and use it to further my success? How can I help? How can taxes help me build my business? And once I learned that from our clients, then when I opened my own CPA firm in 1979, I used that methodology to approach clients. What I found was um, by keeping track of numbers, my undergraduate degree was basically in theoretical mathematics. I was keeping track and finding that about 85% of all small business owners pay too much in tax. And the reason that they paid too much in tax was not really because of uh, technical problems in the tax return, but because they hadn't aligned themselves with the values that were being promoted within the tax code. So so last week we talked about presidential tax planning and, you know, presidential tax returns and some of the planning that our past presidents have done. Uh, when you say aligning their values with the tax system, what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Because obviously our legislators come up with the tax code and most people think that the tax, co- tax code is there to generate revenue for the government, for, you know, operating our, you know, this great country. What do you mean by, by aligning our values with the tax code? I uh, write tax classes for CPAs for continuing professional education. And if I had 100 CPAs in the room with me, well over 85% of them would say that the primary purpose of the tax code is to raise money for the government. That was true before the 1930s, hasn't been true since then. We've always had a progressive income tax code in this country. It's come and gone as, as the government has used other ways to finance money. In the 30s, President Roosevelt changed the purpose of the tax code, and basically the primary purpose of the tax code was to use tax benefits to either encourage you or discourage you as a taxpayer from doing certain activities or engaging in certain activities. So kind of the buzzword out of the 30s was the tax code is an exercise in social engineering. It's absolutely the only reason we can explain why, all things being equal, a single person pays more in tax than a married couple with five kids. And that is because the tax code, based out of that time, was pushing that result. And so what happens is is that most people think of, of the tax code, especially tax preparers, as a technical set of rules Don't do this, do that, take that number, put it on this page, this line, and take a percentage of it. And that is true at a certain level of the tax code. But the real level of the tax code is social engineering. There's about 13 things that the tax code really wants you to accomplish. 
protection and providing for your spouse, making sure that you have enough money for retirement, those things like that. And the tax code will go ahead and give you a substantial tax benefit if you'll align your activities to support one of those 13 items. So that's what I mean by the, by the tax code being an exercise in social engineering. And because most small business owners miss that point, about 85% of them end up paying far more in tax than they should. So the idea is that as, as you kind of go through life, there are things that the government or you know, the IRS want us to do. And if we do them, we're going to get tax breaks. Absolutely. So, so Mike, you've obviously, you know, had a chance to pay taxes many, many years. <laughs> um, and as you've kind of gone through, when, when, when have you found in your, in your lifetime and uh, as an employee, as a business owner, as a, uh, as a family man, when, when do you find that you've paid the least in taxes? What, what are the things that, that you've done that have helped you to pay the least in taxes or what circumstances have helped you to kind of be in that role? Well, getting married was a good thing. Getting married really dropped it, but also having children. And as the children leave the house, the taxes start creeping back in. But being a homeowner, those kinds of things have actually been a benefit to us. And we have an LLC with a, with our family, and that actually sometimes doesn't. It kind of hurts us on our taxes. So maybe there's some things I don't know about that in there. But it's when I, you know, like, again, we've had those tax benefits because we've had kids. Because we've had a home and because we got married. So, 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 those, so John, those would be examples of things that the tax code was intended to incentivize. Absolutely. And the tax code is really based on four distinct principles. Uh, I call them cornerstones. The first is vision. And why would the tax code start at vision? Because the social engineering is designed to help small business owners reach their goals on time, on budget, and with the highest percent of uh, probability. The next one is structure and compliance. Mike mentioned, well, I had an LLC and it might have cost me some tax. That is true if it's not structured properly or the economic transactions that the government wants to tax are not fully reported or correctly reported on your tax return. The third cornerstone is measurement. How do we measure things? Many of the tax benefits that a small business owner could receive are only available if the underlying books and records capture information in a certain way. So if your measurement process is wrong, you're going to leave a lot of tax benefits on the table. And then the fourth cornerstone is exit. How, do, how does the small business owner plan to leave his business so that he or she doesn't have to work every day? They can live on their past successes. And that's a process that starts, should start from day one of the business. And so if you have those four cornerstones aligned correctly with uh, the social purpose of the tax code, you will naturally pay less in tax. So a few weeks back, we, we were talking about planning for professionals and planning for business owners. And... Um, you know, I, I think we mentioned it then, and, and, and I know a lot of listeners, and if you're a business owner, you've probably heard this before, but the difference between an employee and a business owner is pretty dramatic in the, the deductions that are available to you for your taxes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When you're, an, when you're an employee, you have a very small fraction of the available tax benefits that are available. It's just because you're structured as an employee. And, and what happens is, is that I would say the vast majority of tax benefits from a dollar point of view are really only available to a business owner. So a little bit later in the show, we're going to we're going to talk about, you know, what are some of those strategies that business owners can use to lower their tax exposure? But let's take a minute and talk about you have an assessment tool uh, on your website that actually helps somebody to go in and they can put in some basic information and it tells them if they're overpaying in taxes. Yes. What, what it does, Glenn, is this. Over the years, um, starting in about the mid to late 1980s, I began to keep uh, statistical records of our clients. What they were doing, uh, structure, activities, other kinds of tax elections, and then correlating that information to how much taxes they were paying. If you'll go to our website, we have an assessment. 
it starts with the basic premise that 85% of all small business owners pay too much in tax. By answering these questions, I can quantify whether you're one of the 15 that doesn't or one of the 85 that does pay too much. And then based on the score of the assessment, based on large number methodology, I can tell you your approximate percentage of overpayment of taxes. So, so www.taxesmastered.com, that's taxesmastered.com, and, uh, and that's where you can find this assessment. And then by answering a handful of questions, you can find out if you're overpaying in taxes. Uh, we're here with John Brooke from Taxes Master talking about tax planning for business owners and how you can lower your tax exposure as a business owner. Uh, so we'll be back in just a little bit. Thanks for joining in on Remember Me. And uh, we'll be back in just a little bit to talk about tax planning for business owners. Legal, we're a refreshingly different type of law firm. Other law firms charge clients by the minute. Sometimes you're afraid to call your lawyer because you're worried about the cost. Not with Peace Legal. You have the option in most cases between hourly billing and flat fee billing. With flat fee billing, you know how much your case will cost up front. One flat fee, no hidden costs, and no charges to speak with your lawyer. We specialize in family law, adoptions, divorce, prenuptial agreements, and enforcement of custody and support orders. We also work with businesses and nonprofits, with planning, contracts, and employment issues. We also handle what we call life law matters. These are those cases that arise just by living life, buying a home, rental agreements, power of attorneys, and traffic and DUI matters. We have five offices in Orem, Ogden, Salt Lake City, Sandy, and Spanish Fork. Visit us at PeaceLegal.net. That's P-E-A-C-E-L-E-G-A-L.net. Or call us at 801-876-LAWS. That's 801-876-5297. Our consultations are free, and we will always work hard for you. Peace Legal. We're a refreshingly different type of law firm. Welcome back to Remember Me, the show where we talk about leaving a legacy and uh, planning how you'll be remembered. It's sponsored by Intervivos. We're here today with John Brook, uh, the principal at Taxes Mastered, and we're talking about uh, planning for business owners and helping them to reduce their tax liability. And, you know, I get the sense as we meet with business owners and and, uh, sit down with people who have been in business for a while that they have CPAs that they work with, they have professionals that they work with, and um, they've addressed their tax planning, I guess, on a year-to-year basis, or at least they think they do. What what's the difference between the type of planning that that we do when we sit down with somebody, or that you do, John, um, and and what they get from their CPA every year? Uh, Glenn, last December I spoke at the uh, winter conference for the Utah Association of CPAs. And I presented a survey that we had taken in the past 18 months of over 400 business owners. The estimated, the estimated revenue on the uh, business was just under $2 million, and the take-home compensation for the owner was right around one hundred and thirty-five dollars to $150,000. So these were clients that should have been the target that CPAs would want to market to. 54% of them said that they absolutely refused to work with a CPA because they couldn't see the difference between the CPA's tax return that they prepared and just some other tax return preparation firm. The other approximately 56%, their major uh, complaint was, we never get any good advice from our CPA. In 1979, I went to an American Institute of CPAs Uh, management of an accounting practice, Uh, the subset of that was a tax firm with four or less uh, partners. In there, they told us that a well-run CPA firm was approximately 80% of your revenue came from good ideas and approximately 20% of your revenue came from tax return preparation. In looking at CPA firms today that um, and information that we get, that's almost reversed. 
you'll have less than 18, 15, 18 percent of the revenue is good ideas. The rest of it is tax return preparation. And my argument is, is that you can't return, you can't prepare the tax return until you know what the business owner is trying to do. And once you understand what the business owner is trying to do, then you go to the tax code and get the right sections. I mean, one of the fun things, if you want to kind of be cruel, is get three CPAs together, give them the same facts, and they'll all come up with different answers. It's not that any of them are wrong. They're all correct. It's just that one answer is correct for one uh, small business owner's vision. One is correct for another. And so you've got to tie it in there. So if I had to say, well, why is our practice different? I would say we start with the vision of the uh, of the client. Really understand what that small business owner is trying to do. Then you go into the tax code and you match the relevant sections that are important to help them achieve those goals. Then you prepare a tax return simply for the purpose of documenting to the government how you match the vision, the dreams of the client, the economic realities onto the tax return. The tax return is, a, is the third thing you're worried about. But unfortunately for most small business owners, their tax advisors, that's the uh, most important thing that they're worried about. So I think, I think what you're saying is when you sit down with the client, the idea is to look at future years, next year and beyond, of what, what they're going to need and what they're going to be planning for in regards to their taxes. And normally when they sit with their CPA, the CPA is looking at or their, or their accountant is looking at last year and what could have been done. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the problem with accounting is that you look mostly in the past. You're driving a car out of your rearview mirror. Very little attention is paid to what do these numbers tell me about what's going to happen next month, next quarter, next year. Now, the future changes. We all understand that. But if you're prepared and you kind of understand where you're going and you've got a direction, then those changes become opportunities. They don't become fatal to you. And so the other argument that we will make is that, yes, we have to have very, very strong historical accounting. But you've got to look at what do those numbers mean. You've got to use them to shine some sort of light into the dark fog of the future to help you navigate. And the true purpose of accounting is to do both. Tell you what happened in the past and give you an idea of what's going to happen in the future. So, you know, there's a whole world of tax planning I think most business owners never even know about. Um, we do a lot of planning in, in, on the legal side when it comes to capital gains uh, exposure, when it comes to, you know, the exit from a business. Uh, a lot of times we do planning for what we call transfer taxes, so everything from estate taxes to gift taxes. And the average taxpayer doesn't really have to deal with those things on a day-to-day -day basis. They just deal with their regular income taxes. Um, and so would That's you say, true. yeah, that what, what you do on the tax planning side is uh, interfering with what they would have their accountant or their CPA doing, or is it just kind of overlap? Or how? what's the... I, I would hope that what our services do is greatly magnify the uh, service that their current CPA is providing. My background is a CPA. I'm proud of my profession. I'm proud of, of the work that they do. I think that most CPAs have a very, very strong desire to help their clients. I just think the tools that they're using are not all of those that are available. And so we work a lot with clients and their CPAs, where the CPA is mostly concerned about the tactical side of their life, filling out the tax returns, the tax forms, historical accounting, and we work on the strategic side. How are we going to reach our goals on time, on budget, with the highest probability of success? What's our speed of, imp of implementation? What are the opportunities that are developing that we might not see unless we have good numbers and, and numeric matrices to judge them by? That's how we help our clients. Hey, John, I, I, had, I had a question because, you know, when you introduced yourself, you talked about aligning yourself and the, the tax codes were there to help 
business owners prepare for retirement. So as a, as a business owner, what kind of strategies should we be looking at trying to you know, plan for retirement? Well, in, in first, your exit, that exit cornerstone covers a lot of things. It covers the money that, that uh, the business owner is going to live on when he no longer or she no longer works at the office. It covers the buy-sell agreement that might happen between partners as they terminate either voluntarily or because of death or under friction. It handles the transfer of property if we're trying to create um, a business that our children or other family members can take over. So basically what the tax code is saying is let's start at the very beginning and let's rank our uh, things that we want to accomplish in order of priority. Probably number one is providing for our spouse and I uh, and, uh, and us until we're 100 years old or however we think we're going to live. Then next, how can we uh, enrich our children and grandchildren and our immediate families' lives? How can we orderly trans, um, transact or uh, sell the business or transfer it or do whatever we're doing? And what happens is, is if you have a grand vision, then the things that you should do are actually prioritized for you. You start with the basics and you move on. And so many of the tax uh, structures that people might run into, Glenn mentioned real estate, a Section 1031 transfer or tax-free exchange, are really and should be viewed as part of an overall exit strategy. How are we building our wealth? And then once we build it, how do we transfer it to people? Because estate planning is really transfer of values, not transfer of money. And then how, how do we provide a proper stewardship for those things? And oddly enough, the tax code really offers a safe path for us in all of those areas. So as we're, uh, as we're leaving a legacy and, and as a business owner, there's a lot of opportunities to do that, both in business and for your family, building wealth and so on and so forth. Um, these strategies, tax planning strategies that, uh, that John's been talking about are definitely a way to be able to reflect those values, not just on your tax return and in those tax savings, but also to be able to leave for the next generation, for the employees and everything else. John, thanks for being with us here uh, today thanks, on the show. Great. And uh, if you want to check out that tax assessment and find out if you're paying too much in taxes, go to www.taxesmaster.com, taxesmaster.com and put in your information and make sure you put uh, that you were referred by Glenn Wagstaff or Remember Me. And uh, thanks for joining us for today's show. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you next week. And thanks again, John, for, for joining us today. Thank you, Glenn. 